Deferred grazing is a low cost way to deal with the spring flush of feed. So what people like Alan do is take a few paddocks out from grazing, they close a gate on them, and that means that the sheep or cattle can then keep control of the pastures and the other paddock on the farm and maintain the feed quality. In addition to maintaining the feed quality throughout the whole farm, we are aiming with deferred grazing to improve the persistence and production of the, the good plant species such as the ryegrass in the paddocks that are being deferred. Well, I am actually a scientific type of person, so I get on quite well with scientists and, um, and I like to see things analysed and proven. So yeah, we already knew the benefits and we could actually physically see them and usually when you can see something, well it's, there's something going on. And we could see the improvements in the paddocks and now we've physically measured them and um, measured the quality of the pasture and found there's quite a, a lot of benefits. There's a number of advantages we're finding from the experiments we're doing on Alan's farm. We are finding improvements in the, propor the proportion of desirable plant species that are in the pastures. So we are increasing the amount of ryegrass in the pastures. There are more ryegrass tillers, or as you could say, ryegrass stems in the paddock. So that means it's better quality feed for Alan and it's increasing the longevity and survival of those plants in the pasture. I've found a lot, of, a lot about pasture quality and species and weeds and all those sort of things and the stuff going on un under the ground and the roots and, and all those sorts of things that I never knew before. I found that um, by accident more than anything that uh, we had surplus feed one year and I deferred a paddock and, um, and we had the right stock class to, uh, to feed it off and we saw the benefits of um, the extra grass we're growing in that paddock, the improvement in, um, in worm numbers and um, the fact that it was just um, uh, just growing more grass through the, through the whole term of the year. On Alan's farm, we're comparing three different ways of grazing. The first one is a standard rotational grazing treatment where the pastures are being grazed approximately every three weeks. The second treatment is a short deferred treatment where the pastures are being uh, missed out and being grazed for, for one grazing and then in the second grazing, they're being opened up and the livestock are going in. This is allowing the ryegrass to flower. By allowing the ryegrass to flower, there are more energy reserves going back down to the base of the plant, which later on the following autumn means that you get more ryegrass tillers or ryegrass stems. The third treatment is a long deferred period. The paddocks are shut up from November right through to February. This allows the ryegrass to set seed. So the following autumn, what we are finding is that there is more ryegrass in the paddock. There are ryegrass seedlings because of the seed that was in the seed bank. And there are also more ryegrass tillers or grass stems because the ryegrass is more vigorous because it's had more energy stored in the base. In addition, we are finding that the root mass is increasing by up to three times as much as occurs with normal grazing. And this will help the plant to be more resilient during drought, uh, it's, and not only has it got more roots, but it has more roots growing down deeper. Well, when you think about it, we're grass farmers. All the grass we grow, we're trying to maximise into, into profit and utilise um, as much of that feed as we can. So through the big spike in the, uh, in the spring and early summer, for me, it was keeping the, um, our pastures in the sweet spot in terms of um, high emmy grass, growing as much of it as we can turning into profit and the other thing was saving that wedge of feed for when it got dry perhaps in the, um, in the autumn knowing that we're, we're going to have a rejuvenating effect to those, um, to those pastures. The other thing, the story that's not told is that look it simplifies your farm system, it takes the stress out of it. I am actually a keen surfer and fisherman, it gives me more time to go and do the things I like with my family rather than uh, wait, worrying about the hay getting wet or the silage getting wet. Another benefit is worm-free pasture. When, when a paddock is fallowed for three months, there's no egg, eggs being dropped. So there's no very little larvae on that pasture and it makes an ideal pasture for calves or lambs in the autumn where levels can be quite high. 
puts a lot of farmers off because they think, oh, you're taking out a chunk of your farm, we're gonna, it's gonna turn to, to, to rubbish sort of pasture. Um, but you've got to think about the balance area of the farm, which could be um, 80%, it could be 90%, and you're going to maintain high quality feed over that part of the farm and keep that growing in a sweet, sweet spot. In fact, you're going to grow more volume, more high quality, and if you've got the appropriate stock on, like you're using lambs or finishing bulls or steers, you're going to convert that into, into protein that's going to be of real value to you in terms of dollars. In addition to looking at how deferred grazing is impacting the amount of feed and the health of the, the vigour of the ryegrass, we wanted to know the impact on the soil. So we're working with Karen Mueller from Plant and Food Research who is doing a lot of soil measurements. The results she has to date are very promising. I'm involved in a catchment group uh, called the Perori Project. What we're trying to mitigate is against sediment loss into the, our harbour out of our Tamania catchment. So our focus is mainly on sediment. So if you think about coming to a dry spell in the autumn, um, we can put our, our heifers or um, breeding cows on, on the deferred grazing and allow the rest of the farm to come away. That means a little bit less in, but the most importantly, it means we're gonna get our covers up and, and we all know that having a, the covers at appropriate level mitigates against the sediment loss. One real strength of this project is it's been such a good team to work with. We have beef and lamb, very strong support from beef and lamb, from Balance, from Waikato Regional Council, from Bay of Plenty Regional Council, and that we've been learning so much from the farmers that are involved in the group. So there's a real buzz with group meetings, and it's because of that combined approach with the number of different uh, people, for different stakeholders are putting in that we're uh, getting such good results.